Welcome to the second edition of AFL Player Battles. For these videos, we match up two players across any time period in the AFL, and then you can decide who is better, who your favourite is, or simply which one you enjoyed watching the most. They are based on players' positions, although there is one exception made for today's video. We have three really good matchups to explore, so let's have a look at the first one. It's the battle of a pair of football's greatest ever warriors and captains. Joel Selwood and Michael Voss were each the leaders of their clubs for 10 or more seasons and widely respected in the competition while they were playing. It's a tough pick between two of the AFL's toughest ever. We'll start off with the recently retired Joel Selwood. It's a long list of accolades he collected in his playing time. Let's start with the silverware, including four premierships with his first in 2007 his first season in the AFL and his last in 2022, his last season in the AFL. That 2022 grand final win also put him in the books as a premiership captain. Selwood also has a lot of the most mosts that we have ever seen. His 40 finals is the highest amount ever played, 245 games as captain with 160 of those wins are both record setters and his final total of 355 games is the most a Geelong player has ever reached, although teammate Tom Hawkins will be a shot to pass it. Six All-Australians, with three being the representative captain, speak to his leadership, and his three best and fairest prove his consistency. For his career, he has averages of near 25 disposals, five tackles, and half a goal per game. He was physical and in and under as a player, so to play for as long as he did is remarkable. Four Robert Rose medals as the most courageous player is a big part of how people remember Selwood. How many times did we see him bleeding, cut up, or in a big clash on the field? A lot. His competitiveness and ferocity to win is how you lead a club for 11 seasons and finish with the CV Selwood did. But if there's another captain to challenge Selwood, Voss might be it. The current day Carlton coach is pretty mild-mannered, but in his playing days he was far from it. Not many players in this day and age are this physical, partly because the rules don't allow you to be. The duo line up similar in a few awards. Voss has five All-Australians himself, being captain in 2002 and 2003. His five best and fairest topple Selwood by a couple, but here are a few more disparities. For as tough as Voss was, he did only win one Robert Rose medal mainly due to Glenn Archer winning six, but his four AFLPA best captain wins trump Selwood who sits at one. Voss does have a Brownlow medal, sharing it with James Hurd, but Joel Selwood did poll incredibly well in his entire career. Three premierships for Voss is one less than Selwood, but he does have a three-peat and was captain for all of the wins. It's hard to split them. Their playing styles were similar, and in a numbers focus, Voss averaged about four disposals less per game over his career, but kicked 70 more goals. His durability was great too, finishing with 289 games over 15 seasons. Good luck trying to pick between these two. Their careers line up incredibly close, and their on-field styles mirror up as well. They are the two premier defenders of the 2010s, Jeremy McGovern was the intercept king and he's still playing on at 31, while Alex Rance retired early but established himself as the best fullback in a half decade long span. It took a while for Jeremy McGovern to earn the reputation as an elite defender. He was initially drafted to be a Ford, but his reading of the play made him the perfect defender to be let loose. He has always carried an extra few kilos on his 6 foot 6 frame, but aerially it has never seemed to have affected him. For the minimum of 20 games played, McGovern led the league in intercept marks in 2016, 17 and 18 while coming second in 2019. Fittingly, this matches up with his four All-Australian selections. For this time span, McGovern barely missed any games and was a driving force in the 2018 West Coast Premiership. Coming off his man to intercept, began the chain of play that led to the Dom Sheed goal. Without McGovern's ability to read the play perfectly, Sheed probably doesn't get that shot at goal. Since 2019, McGovern has missed quite a bit of football, 
and like the Eagles themselves, his form has slowly fallen off. He still has games where he dominates, but for that four year span, he was the intercept king in the competition. Well, if this recent photo is anything to go by, even at 34, Alex Rance could be playing in the AFL. He retired in 2019 after suffering an ACL injury in round one. His decision was unrelated to the injury as he wanted to fulfill other things in his life. But look at this record he achieved in exactly 200 games. He tops McGovern's four All-Australians with five himself, including being captain of the side in 2017. He was Richmond's vice captain from 2017 to 2019, being a significant leader at the club during the beginning of their three premiership run. A best and fairest in 2015 was backed up by runner-up placements in 16 and in the grand final season of 17. Although he wasn't as good of an interceptor as McGovern, it was still an important part of his game but no doubt he could lock onto a single forward and shut them down while causing chaos in the back 50. His career averages of 17 disposals and 6 marks per game are big numbers for a key back. All of this was achieved at just 30 years of age. McGovern has gotten plenty of praise, but when he retired, Rance was declared by many as an all-time great defender and the best this century. The record speaks for itself. This one might come down to if you prefer the intercept marking and bounce McGovern provided or the all-round dominance Rance had in his prime. It's a close call for two of the iconic defenders of the 2010s. The final matchup of the video will be father against son. It's a little more difficult to pick one as they played far different positions and were in different eras. We'll focus on Ablett Senior to start. 1,031 goals in just 248 games. He began at the Hawks, but played only six matches between 1981 and 1983, making a defining move to Geelong. Playing mainly on a wing or at half forward, his second year at the Cats finished with an 82 goal return. His form continued and we skipped to 1989 and that year's grand final. Nine goals in a losing effort rewarded him with the Norm Smith medal. Sadly for Ablett Senior, it will be the first of another three grand final losses. The deeper into his career he got, the deeper he went inside 50 and at 32 began the first of three consecutive Coleman medal seasons. His total tallies of 124, 129 and 122 goals will never be seen again. He was All-Australian in every one of those seasons and won the Plays MVP in 1993. These highlights of brute force and power show how unstoppable he was and the natural talent he had. He was a nine-time club leading goal kicker and was voted as Geelong's greatest ever player. Many in modern times go to his son when talking about the best ever. The midfield mastery of Ablett Jr. was even longer lasting than his father. For his club accolades, his two premierships top senior, but both were able to reach four grand finals. He was captain of the Suns after joining in 2011, holding the mantle until 2017. He was still powerful like his father, but could accumulate much more playing on the ball and was so weavy and clever getting out of traffic. He really couldn't be stopped whether he was at Geelong or Gold Coast. Individually, the record is in the top level. Two Brownlows, a record five player MVPs, eight All-Australians, six best and fairest, and even three club leading goal kicker awards. It was done in style and for a long time. Even though his body began to break down after 30, finishing on 357 games and 445 goals is a monumental effort. This matchup might come down to what position you think is more valuable. Do you want the unstoppable full forward or the untaggable midfielder who kicks it to the full forward? In the end, they are the best father-son duo ever and no one will top them. Let me know down below who you pick in each of the bouts and thanks for watching another AFL Player Battles. I hope you enjoyed it.